horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! Three men waited in the parlor of the Gilman Ranch House. One sat stiffly in a chair. A second stood erect and motionless. A third nervously paced the room. All three, however, kept their eyes fixed upon the closed door to Sam Gilman's room. Finally, the one halted his restless walking and confronted the man who stood erect. Dusty, why doesn't Doc come out? Why don't he tell us something? Mm, Take it easy, Mort. Getting excited won't help. I can't stand this waiting. Easy, boy, easy. Hank? Yes, Mort? We get this. If Pa dies, the Doc can't save him. Yes? I'll kill you. Well, here now, Mort. Leave your brother alone. He feels just as bad about this as you do. Feels bad. Mort, you can't blame Hank for... Save your breath, Dusty. Here's the Doc. Doc? Is it... Will he... I'm sorry, boys. I did everything I could. You mean... Your father's dead. No. Dead. There went the finest fella I ever worked for. Dead. You hear that, Hank? You killer. Mort, take it easy. Here, stop it. I'll get you, you dirty killer. Let Hank go. Stay away. Don't interfere. Let let go, Hank. Let go of me. I'll fix you. It was an accident. Hank couldn't help it. Stop choking him. There now. He shot him. Hank shot Dad. Now, calm down. You you all right, Hank? Yeah, I, I guess so. You'd better control yourself, Mort. I didn't shoot, Pa. Maybe Hank's telling the truth, Mort. After all, nobody's seen your Pa get shot. He was found beside Cheyenne Creek. Yeah, but that Hank truth... was hunting there, wasn't you, Hank? Yes, I was. Had there been anybody else anywhere near the creek? Had there? I... I don't know. You know, doggone well there hadn't been. Mort, look. You'd been hunting yourself, hadn't you? Over by the salt flats. You trying to say it was one of my bullets that hit him? Of course not, Mort. I'm just trying to make the point that if your father had ridden toward the flats instead of the creek, it could have been one of your bullets. I'm not fool enough to shoot unless I know there's nobody around. You can take your hands off me now, Doc. Well. I won't go after Hank. You just forgot yourself, Mort. You won't fly off the handle again. No, but I'm leaving here. Now, you Mort. shut up. From now on, you're no more my brother than, than Dusty is. You can have the ranch. You can stay here and run things to suit yourself. I'm through. 
Mort, you've got to believe me. I didn't shoot, Pa. Even if he did, it was an accident. You can call it an accident, but I say it's murder. And I won't stay in the same house with a murderer. Mort, your things... I don't want them. But I'll make you a promise, Hank. Someday you'll pay for this. And I'll be the one to make you pay. Hank? Mort didn't mean the things he said. He... Well, naturally, he's upset, but he'll get over it. He'll be back, and I'm sure he'll apologize. Not Mort. He's just riled up. No, Doc, you don't savvy Mort like I do. But surely he can't feel the same after he's had time to think things over. He'll think it over. The more he thinks, the more he'll hate me. As the years passed, the community forgot Sam Gilman. Hank met a girl named Mary. They were sweethearts. They married, and two years later, their son Neil was born. The boy went through a normal boyhood, and then away to school and back. I'd always sort of hoped Neil would take over the ranch. But Hank, he has a marvelous opportunity in the bank. <laughs> well, I've got no objections to having our son a banker. Neil had been a good son and pleasant company. Then there came a period when his parents were concerned, and that concern increased as Neil became more secretive and quiet with each day that passed. Oh, Hank, Neil just rode into the yard. He's putting his horse in the grass. Uh-huh. Won't you speak to him tonight? He won't listen to me. I guess I'd better. He's been acting mighty strange lately, spending a lot of time in the Star Cafe. Yes, I know he has. Bad place for a young fella that's trying to get ahead in the banking game. He's coming in now. I'll let you talk to him alone. He may talk more freely if I'm not around. Uh, time you got to bed, anyhow. Good night. Good night. Fool kids, uh... I was the same at his age, so I reckon. Still up, Paul? It looks like it. Well, I'm about ready to turn in. I'm dog tired. And that's a fast, sir. Huh? I want to talk to you. What is it? Mind sitting down for a second? I, uh... I, no, I guess not. Son, you haven't been yourself lately. There's something wrong. Yeah, there's no use denying it. I can read you like a book. There's something on your mind, something worrying you. Care to let me know what it is? Gosh, Paul, you must be imagining things. <laughs> There's nothing worrying me. Sure? Of course I'm sure. Remember, son, there's nothing in the world you can't tell me. That's a point that's not easy for a father to put over to his son. But it's true. You can tell me anything. Now, come on. Why don't you talk things over? I... Uh, Shucks out with it. Don't be afraid of your own father. Uh, well, there is something, Pa. <laughs> oh, it doesn't amount to much. That is, I... Uh, <laughs> I had to get out, huh? Son, there's just two things I hate like sin. Lying and gambling. It would take me all around and I'm pretty easy going. So let's have it, huh? You, uh, you think gambling's pretty bad, huh? For those that can't afford it, there's nothing worse. And I've still got to see the first fellow who could afford it. Oh. It leads to debt and no end of trouble. I've never gambled myself, and I've never had any use for the man who did. Oh, what well, made you start talking about that? Oh, thinking of the Star Cafe, I guess. There's a new man running it, isn't there? Uh-huh. I... Good night, Paul. Now, what in blazes got into him? Hank, did you talk to Neil? Uh-huh, I, I started to. Well, what did he say? Honey, he was right on the point of telling me something. And he shut up just like a clam. I don't know what got into him. Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, had reined up beside an old cabin bordering their trail. 
They had bought a few supplies from the old man who owned the cabin. So you say you are heading for the panhandle, eh? Well, it's about four weeks' travel from here. We expect to reach it sooner or later. I wish I was going along. Yes. <laughs> Even if I had to wear a mask like you to do it, eh? <laughs> Yes, sir, stranger, that used to be my old stamping ground years back. Had a parcel of friends here at one time. I never forgot them. How long has it been since you left? Just 25 years. You've got an accurate memory. Oh, I don't recollect everything, but there's some things that a man never forgets. Oh? Nothing that it interests you, I reckon. It wasn't anything very pleasant, either. I thought a heap of that old fellow... Yes? Uh, who was that? Well, likely you never heard of him. Sam Gilman was his name. Sam Gilman? As a matter of fact, I have. There's a Henry Gilman still in a panhandle. Uh-huh. Sam son. He had two of them. I was just trying to remember what it was I'd heard about Sam. There was a shooting accident. Henry was supposed to have been hunting, and one of his bullets struck his father by accident. They found Sam near Cheyenne Creek. You are almost right. It was near the salt flats that Sam was found. I heard several people tell the story. They all said Sam was found near the creek. It caused a quarrel between Henry and his brother Mort. Mort couldn't forgive his brother for the accident and disappeared. I still say old Sam was found on the salt flats, mister. If that had been true, Henry couldn't have shot his father. He wasn't near there. That's where they say Mort was hunting. Well, I don't know anything about that. But when I say it was salt flats, I know what I'm talking about. Yes? You see, it was me that found Sam. You're the man who brought him to the ranch house that day? I am. Who was it you told about where you'd found him? Why, uh, Hank. You're sure it was Hank? I ought to be. I knew them boys well. Don't you realize what this means? Yeah. Gosh, Toto, I... Toto, we're riding. Ah, here, Scott. Here, Papa. Here, Silver. What did I say to drive you off so fast? Did I say anything to get you mad? Why, of course not. Sit me, Philip. Then what's the rush? You've given me the most important information I've picked up in the best part of a year. Adios. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. evening, two weeks later, Neil Gilman was summoned from the Star Cafe's gaming tables into the office of its manager. Come in, Neil. You sent for me, Ace. I, I suppose it's about the money I owe. I'll need a little more time. That's all the time we can give you. Two weeks ago, you said you'd speak to your father. We waited just as long as we can. But I can't pay right now. That's too bad. But you told me not to worry. You said you didn't care when you got paid. Then all of a sudden you want the money right away. It's not my doing, Neil. Orders from Mr. Franklin. He said to make me pay up? Yep. Then let me talk to him. If I could explain things to him, I'm sure he'd understand. No one talks to Mr. Franklin. He told me to collect from you or go tell your boss a few things. No, you can't tell the banker about me. Don't do that. Why not? I think he'd be glad to know that you've gambled away $5,000 more than you can pay. It, it mean my job. Yep, I suppose it would. <laughs> You've got to give me another chance. Another chance? Why? What would we gain by it? You've already admitted you can't get that money for us. Give me a week. A week? <laughs> you have my word, you'll get your money. Every last penny. Oh. Change your mind about being able to get the money, hmm? I... I know a way to get it. How? Oh. That's my business. Oh. <laughs> yes, I imagine it is. All right, then, Neil. You have one week. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Two weeks passed after Neil promised to pay his gambling debt. During those two weeks, his parents became more and more concerned by his silent, secretive manner. Mary finally spoke of it to Hank. But we've let this go just as long as we can. I know there's something wrong with Neil, something terribly wrong. I'm afraid you're right. We have to do something. I wish I knew what. Perhaps... Perhaps if you talk to him again, you... Well, I'll have another try. Do make him tell you, Hank. I'll do my best. Hi in there. You sleeping? What do you want? I was for letting your dad in for a second. Wait a minute. Hello, Pa. What is it? <laughs> You're just sitting here in the dark, will you? Shut the door. I don't need any light if you don't, I reckon. I, uh, I was lying down. I thought maybe I'd nap a bit. Nap? Hmm? Yes. Feel more like talking now than you did the other time, son? What's there to talk about? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. I... I... Have a fight with your girl? Oh, shucks, no. Hmm. Finding your job too tough for you? Figure maybe you'd like to work here on the ranch with me? Oh, that's not it. Oh. And you admit there is something, you... Oh, I... Yeah? I... Come on. We got stuck like this once before. I... I... Oh, I'm going to jail. What's that? I, I must have been crazy out of my head. I didn't know what to do. To, they'll jail me just as sure as I'm living. All right, son. Let's have all of it. Hearing the murmur of voices within her son's room... Neil's mother watched his door anxiously. Finally... Come on, Neil. Yes, Paul? Honey, get our cash box. What, Hank? I said the cash box. Don't, don't ask me to explain. Just get it. Neil, my guns are hanging by the kitchen door there. Bring them here. Paul, what are you planning to do? You still owe 3000 to this fellow, Franklin? That's it, but I don't well, see Well, I'll what... get them IOUs. And he'll get a stomach full of lead. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been riding steadily toward Henry Gilman's ranch. Four weeks of travel lay behind them. They were at last within sight of the lighted ranch house. There's the place, Tonto. Ah, isn't it good we hear? Horses plenty tired. Yes, it's been a mighty hard trip for them. I hope it's been worthwhile. Meanwhile, Hank Gilman and his son had ridden into town. Oh, who's there? Who, they just mounted who, who, in front of the Star Cafe, tethered their horses, and went inside. Hank walked stiffly, his hands never far from the guns that hung from his hips. Neil, his face white and drawn, followed his father's lead. Where's that manager? There he is. There, just this side of the office. His name's Ace. Fellow with the mustache, huh? Yes. Let me do the talk. But now, don't I be don't... scared. I've run into tin horns like this, Jen, plenty of times before. Come on. You the gent they call Ace? Oh, good evening. Hello, Neil. This must be your father. Yes, Shut yes. Up. Ace, I was for having a private talk with you. What about? About money. About the money you got coming from my son. You, uh... You're paying his debt? I am. Well, it'll be a pleasure. Here's my office. Step in. Now, if you just give me the money, I get Neil's eye I don't do business with the hired hands, mister. When I do business, is with the boss. Mr. Franklin? That's right. I'm afraid that'll be impossible. Neil should have told you. Mr. Franklin sees no one. So, of course, if it... Take us to the boss. You wouldn't dare shoot. Wouldn't I? Just try me out. You'd never get out of here alive. But you'd be dead before I would. So how's it to be? My way or yours? You'll be plenty sore. So will I. Well, this way. Come this way. Hey. Yes, Mr. Franklin. Anyone with you? Tell him there is, and I'll blast you to kingdom come. 
Of course not, Mr. Franklin. One moment. I... Ace, you lied to me. Mort. You're Mort. You. You're my brother. Ace, you fool. This is just what I was trying to guard against. Well, I couldn't help it. I couldn't. He had me covered. Well, the damage is done. All right, Hank, what do you want? You've been in town all these months calling yourself Franklin? I have. Come inside, all of you. Don't stand out there so right. everyone can hear you. All right. So you finally found out who I am, eh? Mortar. I don't savvy. Why didn't you tell us? Why did you change your name? What did I you do? had my reasons. But what reasons? Your kid there tell you what happened? He did. Well, there you are. Huh? Hank, maybe you've forgotten the day I left home. Well, I haven't. I haven't forgotten what I promised you when I left. Promised me? You killed Dad that day when we were hunting. But I... Wait till I finish. You could just call it an accident, let it go at that, couldn't you? Well, I couldn't. I'd always been closer to Dad than you. Maybe that was part of it. I never make a promise I don't keep. That's the rest of it. I... I don't recollect anything about a promise. You don't, huh? Hmm. Don't recollect me standing in the door telling you someday you'd pay? You mean to say you've remembered that all these years? Twenty-five years. And not a day's gone by in any one of them that I haven't thought of it. Well, I worked hard getting cash enough to come back here and keep that promise. Well, I finally did it. Came back. I looked around to see where you could be hurt most. I found it in your boy. You know, Mort, I used to think quite a bit of you when we were kids. That's all dead and done with now. What counts now is that Neil owes me $3,000. A couple of weeks ago, he owed me 5000 I guess we both know where he got the difference. It doesn't matter. Neil and I have talked it over. He's going to the bank and make a clean breast of things. I'm paying back what he took. If he has to go to jail... Well, I reckon he'll take his medicine. Uh, trying to make the best of it, eh? Mort? Well? He made us out of different stuff, even if we are brothers. I'll tell you what I had in mind to do when I came up here. I was going to pay you off and drill you. But you needn't worry. I couldn't do that now. Fact is, I don't reckon I need to. Uh, what's that mean? I've been watching the look on your face. You planned this for years. And now all of a sudden, you've found out you're not enjoying it near so much as you'd figured out. Oh, no? Fact is, you're kind of sorry you've wasted the time. You forced my boy to steal. And it's not near the big thing you thought it'd be. Mort, right now... You're a downright disappointed man. Why, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. I reckon I do. You... Hey, boss, there, that window. What? Uh, Mask man. A robber. I'll get him. Hold it. Why, you... That was just a warning. Don't go any closer to your sneak gun. What do you want? How'd you get in here? I used the stairs that Mort had built on the outside to get in and out of this office without going through the rest of the building. Who are you? How long were you outside of that window? Long enough to be familiar with the conversation... I came in to contribute to it. What are you talking about? The death of your father. What do you mean? Hank. It's about time Mort learned the truth. No, no. So you did know the truth, huh, Hank? That's what I thought. In trying to protect Mort, you've created nothing but trouble. What's that about protecting me? You blamed your father's death on Hank because you thought the body had been found near Cheyenne Creek. Please, please don't go on. Quiet, Hank. Your brother's got to know the truth. What do you mean? When your father was killed, he was on the salt flats. On the salt flats? Do you know what that means? On the salt flats. Hank was hunting on the creek. I was hunting on the salt flat. No. No. Your father was killed, Mort, by a stray bullet fired from your gun. No, no, don't say that. It's true. Hank knew how close you and your father were to each other. He was afraid it might ruin your whole life if you knew that you were to blame for your father's death. So 
So he took the blame. He said he'd been found at the creek. Hank. Hank, tell me. Is that true? I... I guess it is, Mort. Hank did that for you, and you spent a lifetime hating your brother. I, I did. I planned it. I waited, waited, counting the days to when I could show your boy up as a thief to hurt you. Hank, I... Maybe I... Maybe I did the wrong thing, Mort. Me, I'm... I'm a murderer. No, you're not a murderer, Mort. It was an accident. I can't bring back my dad. But I'll do what I can to right things. Neil, you needn't worry about the bank. I'll fix that. Oh, thanks. Hank, I'm an old man. You're getting on, too. Can you forget? No, oh, no, you can't forget. But can you forgive what I've done? Hey, he'd be a fine man that couldn't forgive his own brother, wouldn't it, Mort? I reckon I haven't been much of a man. I wonder if it's too late for me to start over. Neil. Yes? Come over here. Let me look at you. He, he looks a lot like our poor, don't he, Mort? <laughs> he does. He sure does. When he gets older, he's going to be the living image of Dad. Morton, wouldn't you like to get out of this place? Come back to the house where you and I were kids? Hank, you mean that? Why not? If you let me do that, I'll spend the rest of my life trying to be worthy of being uncle to, to our dad's grandson. Yes, I sure will. Say, uh, that mask man. He just went out the window. Same way he came in. Well, uh, who was he? How'd he know? Where'd he come from? I don't know about that, Mort, but uh, it almost seems like Providence sent him. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.